Hey everybody, the Gamer Guru 51 here, and welcome to Super Mario Bros. 3. For anyone who has played video games in their life, you have to know about this game. This game is such a classic that came out on the NES. However, I am playing this on the Super Mario All Stars pack that came out in 1993, or rather, re released for the Wii in 2010. Now, a quick story before I jump into this one. This was not intended to be the next project after Banjo Kazooie Blind finished. In fact, for those of you who have watched the final episode of that series, I mentioned that there was going to be another blind adventure to come out right after. However, I just need a little bit more time. For those of you who do not know, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you probably should, because I mentioned this on there, I am getting married in two weeks. Now, for those of you who have planned a wedding or never planned a wedding in their life, it is very, very stressful. And especially when it's coming down to the wire here in the next few weeks, there's a lot going on. I just need a little bit more time because personally, I just don't want to start the next blind LP and then have to take a hiatus because of all the wedding stuff that's going to be going on. There's just been so much planning. I've been very stressed out about it. There's just a lot going on. And my family's going to be coming down. Everybody's going to be coming down. It's going to be a big celebration and the ceremony and the reception. And I've been spending tons of money on all this stuff. And it's been a crazy time in the household of the gaming guru for sure. So. This is where this game comes in. I need a classic, casual, short game I can play through while I bang it all out, just go through the entire game and just talk about stuff and just have something to upload while I'm in the middle of my wedding shenanigans, per se. So here I am. I'm going to be playing through the entirety of Super Mario Bros. 3. It's going to be a good time. And I'm just going to stop being on the title screen. And we're just going to jump right into it because I spent way too long just non-stop talking about stuff. And I just want to play some Mario 3. Now, I will be going through every level in this game, 100% completion, which is, I believe, all the levels. I don't know every single secret in this game, nor do I claim to be the best Mario 3 player of all time. In fact, I've seen speedruns of this game, and it is absolutely crazy. I'm not at that level. I do claim to not be the worst player in the world at this. I think I'm okay. Uh, I do. I will die in this game. I don't think I've ever played through a deathless run of this. In fact, I think the first time I usually die when I play through this game is in World 3. But I gotta say, I have a lot of memories associated with this game that I will be sharing with you guys because I just think I have some pretty interesting stories just about my childhood because this game is the definition of my childhood, as a, as well as probably many others who have played this game growing up as well. So, I actually have a story I want to tell you guys right now. So, I didn't start playing video games until I was about two years old. Two years old! That is quite early in your life to be playing video games, which is probably why I have really bad eyes. But anyways, um, my mom told me when I was younger, because I didn't remember this at all, that when I played Mario 1, and yes, that is my first game I ever played at 2 years old was Mario 1, she said I did not know how to jump over the first Goomba in the first stage of Mario 1. And of course, at 2 years old, how would you know to press the A button to jump over the first Goomba? In fact, how would you even know what the A button is? I have no idea. So she kept telling me that I just kept running into the Goomba every single time uh, for dozens of lives and I game over plenty of times and I don't know how long it took me to actually jump over the first Goomba but once I did man I were she told me I remember her telling me that I was just so excited uh, just going through the game pressing the A button just mashing it for the most part actually I think in that case no it would be the A button on the NES controller because Super Nintendo you press the B button to jump I don't know but anyway yeah, so I was very excited when I learned how to jump, and I guess that's where I get all of my enthusiasm for learning new things in video games today, is because when I was younger. And, I don't know, man. This game is so good. It's such a good game. I won't really be talking about the game too much here, I'll just be playing it in the background, but I just... I just love this game. This is the game I come to whenever I get depressed and I needed something to cheer me up. This game has always been there. And that's probably why I played this game dozens of times, is because there have been a lot of moments in my life where things just weren't going the way they should, or just a lot of depressing things happening in my life with my family, even to myself. And this has always been the game I go to whenever I'm depressed. Always. And 
I'm not depressed right now because I am recording, and when I usually, when I am recording, I am usually very happy when I record. I'm always in the mood to play games, but this game has always been there, and I think that's one of the reasons why this will always be have a special place in my heart as a one of my favorite games. Uh, I, I don't know if it's my absolute favorite. I think that might go to Paper Mario for the N64, but that list always changes. My list from my what my favorite games are lately changes, because as I play new games that I've never played before, even although by myself or on this channel, I'm always finding games that I think are really good, that I should have played when I was younger, or whatever the case may be. I'm always finding new games that I think are my favorites, and of course that list does change as I play new games. Uh, lately, though, I haven't played any new game, either for my Wii U or anything past the Wii, in a long time. I'm always playing retro games, and I guess I can call myself a retro gamer. I'm also a retro game collector, because I'm always buying games. Um, I don't know. I'm just very, very proud in this day and age to be a gamer, because... I don't know, I just think the community is fantastic, and I know this isn't really, I know this is just a weird talk bit to talk about as I'm playing this game, but honestly, I just, I don't know, maybe we just have a lot of things to talk about, but anyways, let's break things off for just a second and see if I can actually do this, because I don't really know if I can, ah, so close, I usually get the two before I mess up there, I don't know the timing of the last one, but... As you can see, I did get a whistle in the third stage of this world. I will be getting all of the whistles. I'm not going to be using them to skip any levels or any worlds or anything. It's just for the sake of showing off where you can get the whistles. There are three in this game, and I do know where they all are. So I just think it would be cool to show them off, because why the heck not? Like I said, I'm showing off all the secrets that I personally know. So I just think that's cool. But anyways, there's whistle number two. Whistle number three you can get in world two. So, I will be sure to show that off when we get there. Now, I did try playing this game on the uh, GameCube controller. However, that is not a good idea. I personally like playing this game on the uh, classic controller for the Wii. I don't know, it just feels a lot nicer. It feels a lot like a Super Nintendo controller should. So, I am playing it on that. I do own the Super Mario All-Stars version for the Super Nintendo as well. Uh, I'm not playing that because I don't know the quality of it isn't that good as the Wii, of course. I mean, I know the game isn't exactly... I mean, the game looks still looks really good and has aged pretty well throughout the years. Actually, it has, it has aged really well throughout the years. But I just think that I don't really want to use the Dazzle. I mentioned this when I played Banjo-Kazooie. I'm not a huge fan of using my Dazzle. If I could avoid using it, I will. I need to find a new capture card to replace it to play old games because I'm telling you. I have a lot of old games I want to play on the channel, but the Dazzle, it just doesn't cut it anymore. And again, I think I already had this conversation before, too. Alrighty, but we have our first instance of an enemy here. Well, not an enemy, but an enemy on a floor space in the overworld. You kill it, and you get a prize. In this case, a star. I'm very picky with my items, actually. I don't really use them all that often. As you can see, if you press the X button, you get your item selected. And your Y button, I guess, too. But I don't want to use that whistle, because that would be bad. But, like I said, I'm very selective of my items. Maybe if I get mushrooms, I'll use those. But I'm not going to really be using any items. Uh, I wonder when I will actually die in this game. Usually, like I said before, I die in World 3... Ugh. I was trying to get enough P-Speed to fly over that, because it is possible. Uh, I guess I'm not going to go for it today. I'm just going to do things the slow way, because I'm slow. I mean, I do like to go fast, but going fast, as I mentioned a lot of times, does intend to get me in the worst position. But in this case, we already beat the stage, so that's nice. However, I want to see if I can get a star here. Oh, way off. I can time that pretty well without actually getting the fastest P-Speed, which if you can get the fastest P-Speed, you can get a star pretty much all the time. But I think I have an idea of how to do it without that, so... Oh, you got a nice little flower. Pretty sweet. I like keeping all my leaves, too. The leaves are my favorite. Or maybe even pea wings, man. But anyways, we are heading into our first castle. Oh, it's terrible! The king has been transformed! Please find the magic wand so we can change him back! Alright, we will definitely do that. Now, I believe this castle is, in fact, Larry's castle. The first castle of the game. 
Uh, not too difficult. I've seen this castle dozens of times. It has been quite the while since I've played through the entirety of this game in one... Well, I'm not going to play through it in one sitting. Luckily, the All-Stars version does allow you to save whenever you want, so I will be taking advantage of that. However, when you save your game, you have to go back to the beginning of the world that you saved in. It doesn't save progress within the world itself. So keep that in mind if you're playing this game and you need to save. Make sure you save at the beginning of the war before you stop playing. Uh, for the purpose of this particular episode, I might stop at the end of uh, the beginning of World 3. So I'll go through the first two worlds before I stop. And then it's because the first two worlds are the shortest. They will go pretty quick. Now here we have, I believe, yeah, I think this is Larry. Now, not that difficult. I think the hardest coupling in the game personally is Wendy. Uh, in World 3. That is going to be a tricky one to go through, and I always seem to have problems every time I play against her. So, we will see how that goes. But anyways, yeah, there we go. We finished the first world already. Pretty darn quick, if you ask me. And what does the king look like here? Oh, look at him. He looks fantastic. Oh, thank heavens, I'm back to my old self again. Thank you so much. Here is a letter from the princess. Alrighty, we got a nice letter. I wonder what it says. Let's read it. Greetings. If you see any ghosts, be careful. They will give chase if you turn away. I have enclosed a jewel that helps protect you. Princess Toadstool. And yes, that is a P-Wing, one of the best items in the game. Very broken in how it works and its mechanics. But of course, we're not going to do it. I'm probably going to save those for a level where I think I'm going to need it the most. Now, I believe there's a secret in this level if you get enough P-Speed to fly, but, eh, we will see how long I can keep my jumping going without... Well, I guess I messed up there. Now, believe... Oh, really? Alright, well, that's fine. I think one of you guys give me a cape, I think. Right? You? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Give me the cape, thank you. Now I believe if you, f oh, nice little side jump there. Now I believe if you fly, fly somewhere up here, you can get into a pipe. Yeah, is this the pipe you fly into? No, I think it's actually back. Oh, there it is. It's right here, man. Holy crap! Well, let's see what it leads to. I don't even think I've done this before, actually. Oh, really? Is that all it does? If that's all it does, and that would be pretty darn sad. Yes, it is. All right. Well, nice little secret there, but. Eh, not too bad. And, oh boy. Well, I guess it would be a good time to explain this. If you get three of the same card, you will get more lives. You will guarantee to get one life if you just get three cards. But if you get three stars, you'll get five lives. If you get uh, three flowers, I believe you get three and then mushrooms are two. I don't know. But anyways, we have this card game. If you flip over the cards, you get a one-up or you get whatever is shown on the card. I believe this is a mushroom always, this is a flower, and this is a star. Now, here we have a flower. Yep, sure enough. I believe for every single pattern, that is the uh, right thing. So make sure you at least try, like here's a mushroom. So here will be a mushroom as well. Now I don't memorize all the patterns, believe me, I do not remember all of them. So, ooh, a 20. Oh, there was a 10 there, okay. Well, next time, if I remember, then I will be sure to get that correct. But anyways, let's go into this one, see if I can actually beat this. I know the timing for the first two, but not for the third. Uh, is it like right here? No! Oh, I was probably... Okay, I was probably too late there. Alright, moving on to level two here. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward stage, nothing too complicated. Uh, I believe this is the level where you can get a... Uh, either it's a a white mushroom house or a coin ship or something if you get all these coins like I said I don't really know how many coins or whatever the criteria is for getting those so I'm just not even gonna bother uh, I believe the stages in Mario 3 are rather short but there's so many in the game and they're all really unique in their own special way that it just makes it fun to play through for whatever now for those of you who do not know I did play this game with my friend Neo Dark Ride TV on his channel as a co-op let's play uh, I just figured I haven't lp this game yet myself, so I figured eventually I was going to. I just didn't know when the good time to do that was, and I guess today's the day, right? I mean, let's be honest. Always a good time to play Mario 3. There's always a good time to play it. Alright, let's get up here. 
And I believe this is the introduction to booze. I don't know if this is their... I believe this might be their first ever introduction into the Mario universe. I don't know if that's true or not, but I think it is. And wow, I still keep flying speed. Wait, what? What hit me? Dude, what hit me there? Oh, that's dumb. Oh, I wanted to get into that door. Oh, well, whatever. Well, anyways, here is our first introduction to Boom Boom, the easiest boss in the history of Mario games. Or maybe the easiest boss in any video game. I can't think of any boss that would be easier than Boom Boom. But he's gone. Not too shabby. Oh, I missed over that, uh, that, uh, the, the mushroom house. I want it, man. I want it. Alright, pick a box. This contents will help you on your way. If you get a flower, pretty sweet. Uh, again, I'm not going to use it, of course. But just nice to sit there in your inventory. I could just take the pipe to go to this pipe that's over here. But I don't think I'm going to do that. So let's see what's in level 3. Well, I believe one of these has a freaking cape. And it's this one. Perfect. Cape is definitely the most useful item in the entire game. Allows you to fly pretty much over anything, really. Uh, of course, I don't want to go crazy and just lose it. Uh, is there any special secrets in this stage? There probably is, but of course, I am here to go fast. Yep, there is stuff around here. I do see. But I believe in this level, it's pretty hard to get P-Speed. Now here is a cool little thing. I'm pretty sure everybody who's played this game knows. Almost took damage there, which would be bad, but we're just going to sit through and wait until he goes down enough to where I can get into the pipe. Like right now, this is the perfect time to do so. And can we get a flower or a star? Yes, we can. Like I said, if you get fast or the, uh, the fastest P speed, you will pretty much always get a star if you hit the card. So, pretty cool. Now this level right here is Angry Sun Man's level. <laughs> because taking damage is always fun too though. Of course, I'm not dead yet, so that's good. Now, oh, really? That is the first time in years that I was trapped by that tornado. I have never, ever run through that tornado and get sent back. Ever. Ugh. Oh, God. I might just die here. I'm going to try my best. I do not want to die. I do not want to die. Ugh. God. All right, I do want a star. Oh, I was so close. Oh, whatever. I guess the uh, the fact that I didn't die is more important than the uh, than the actual card, right? Well, here's another card game. But since I do have a... Do I have a mushroom? I do. Since I have a mushroom, I might as well use those. Because I do use mushrooms pretty often. Alright, now let's see. That was a mushroom, okay. Oh, cool. There's a mushroom there, too. Now, where was that 10? Uh, that's not it. Oh, okay. A uh, star... No, that's a 1-up. Where's the 10? There we go. We're almost there. 20. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, we got this. We got this. Holy crap, man. It's been so long since I finished a card. Or a card pattern. That's awesome. Holy crap. Nice. Cool. We got a bunch of items from that. But we're just going to move on and kill the next enemy here. Which is a, a boomerang bro. And who took his last life to kill me, but well, didn't really kill me, but he kind of penalized me, well not penalized, he took he, he inflicted damage is what I'm trying to say here, but anyways, this music box I believe will freeze any enemy in the overworld so they don't move between beating each stage, I'm gonna use that because I don't really care about the enemies, I just I'm gonna go through all of them anyway, so it doesn't really matter alright, what do we get from this one? I'm always defaulting to the left box maybe I should go through the other ones well, usually when I go through the houses, I always tend to go to the left and get the left box, but... Oh, well. Oh, you need a mushroom for this level! Or not a mushroom, you need a star, man! You need a star! And I missed! I suck! Well, give me a star, please! I believe you do this. Yep, sure enough. Alright, now if we go up here, we can pretty much take a nice little easy way through the stage and beat it rather fast, if you ask me. I feel like if you fly and you gain a lot of momentum, maybe you fly through everything. Like over here, you can get a bunch of coins. But I'm just going to rack up a bunch of P-Speed. Oh, I thought I was going to take damage there. We're just going to fly through everything. I know there's a place where you do drop down to the... Oh, no. That's it. 
Uh, okay, and I want a star. Or I could just get a mushroom. Maybe I can get three mushrooms and get two lives. Not as good as getting th uh, five lives from the star, but eh. I'll take lives any day of the week. Let's go to five. I know I have to go through all the levels eventually, but... Oh, Chain Chomp, how I don't like you at all. You make me sad. But you're not a difficult enemy to avoid, so... Not too bad. Okay. Alright. Alright, we are moving on through. And... That is the end of the stage. We're just gonna go... Oh god, there's a Chomp right there, too. And it stopped me from getting two mushrooms. Man, that's not fun at all. I, now, I believe this is a very special enemy here, because I believe he will drop a hammer. Now, the hammer is used to break things in your way. And I will be using it on a very selective spot. Uh, I didn't actually learn about this particular secret until I was fairly older, maybe 14, when I played through this game like the million and sixth time. Who would have thought? All right, let's see if I can do this again. All right, come on. I need to time this pretty darn well. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if the timing changes every single time you do it or what. I have no idea. All right, but we're going to use this hammer right over here because not only does it say three in the corner over there, but I believe this mushroom house gives you a instant frog suit. A frog suit. Not really useful in this particular world, but it will be beneficial to us in the next world. Now, this may be... Okay, that may have been the hardest enemy spot in the game. But it contains our third and final whistle of the game, which is very nice. Because now we have all of them, and I can say that I showed them off in this LP. But, whatever. Alright, now this level in the pyramid... Pretty cool level, if you ask me. Now, I did watch the Runaway Guys play through Mario 3 with Chugga. Um, pretty much being the uh, main player because he's never played through Mario 3 until that LP and it was pretty interesting to watch how bad he sucked at the game uh, I know he said he didn't he's never really played it and he's used to Mario World more but I, don't know, I just find it hilarious that a game that I played through quite often and he's not that good at it I don't know but anyways we're just gonna go through here we're gonna go through this little secret I guess not really a secret. It's not hard to get into it. Oh, okay. Or you can just make me jump. And we're just going to collect coins. I think that's all there is here is coins. Now, yeah, there's one up in here. Cool. I did learn this from the LP, too, that I watched. So the Runaway Guys. So I didn't know that life existed until I watched it. But I, I think that's the first time I actually of me actually getting it. So it's pretty cool. Alright, let's go and kill you. And that's the end of the stage. So far, we have not died yet. I don't want to jinx myself by saying that. But I can say that I have not died yet. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully, we can keep it that way for however long it takes me until I die. Now, I believe that may be the last level until, yeah, the end of the stage. The end of the world. So let's go ahead and jump into it, man. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. Okay, cool. Now, fun fact, if you beat the boss of each world with a frog suit, a tanuki suit, or a hammer brother suit, a special uh, note or thing will appear after you beat the stage. Now, it is pretty hard to beat the, uh, the, the airships as the frog suit, but I do want to see if I can do it at least once. I do have a frog suit. So I can show that off if it's possible. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do, especially when it's World 3 and it's Wendy Koopa as World 3. But I will certainly try in the later worlds. But for now, we're just going to use good old Cape Mario or Raccoon Mario, whatever you want to call him. And we're just going to beat the stage with that. Now, this world contains Morton Koopa Jr. as the next Koopaling. And he's really not that bad. He's pretty standard compared to all the Koopalings. Uh, things don't really start... Th things do not start changing up until World 3 when you face Wendy. And that's not good. Alright, that is not good at all. Is this one of those worlds where I can get a bonus power-up? It is not. Okay. Alright, well here's good old Morton. Uh, like I said, not too difficult. So as long as you can just jump on him three times, you're good. Or you can hit him with, I believe, ten fireball shots. Then he goes down too. 
But if you hit him with 10 fireball shots, you cannot jump on him or else then you, it resets and then you have to jump on him three times and then it's just a problem. But there we go, guys. We have beaten the first two worlds in Mario 3. Very, very nice, to say the least. And here's the king. Oh, thank heavens, I am back to my old self again. Thank you so much. Here is a letter from the princess. I think that was like three different voices in there, but whatever. You can stomp on your enemies using Karibo Shoe. I believe Karibo is the Japanese name for Goomba. I have encased a jewel that helps protect you, or in this case, a cloud. But that's a jewel, clearly. All right. Anyways, this is World 3, you guys, so I'm going to end things off here. Next time on Mario 3, we're going to go through World 3 and see what kind of water levels kill me first. Sounds like a plan. So with that being said, everybody, thank you guys so very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time for some more Super Mario Bros. 3. See you guys then!